Living can be an overwhelming place. Uh, it is an overwhelming place. It give you a good idea of what all you can get done in the Louvre in a few hours so that if you're not sure, you have a strategy going in. Otherwise, you're not gonna see very much and you're gonna wander around wondering, like, why did I even come here? And that's the last thing we want you doing. I guess he's not here yet. And so we wait. So for starters, while we wait, the arc behind me, the one that's standing in the middle of the Louvre, was built by Napoleon in 1806-1809. Well, he didn't actually build it, but it was built to commemorate his military victories. And on the other side, those pyramids that you've all become very accustomed to, those were built under François Mitterrand, president of France, in 1980, and were designed by I.M. Pei. I think I already made a video about how to get into the Louvre, but just as a refresher, the pyramids are the main entrance, but often the lines are insanely long. <laughs> So you want to make sure you avoid those at all costs. The reason we're meeting at the arch here is because on either side is a stairwell labeled the Carousel du Louvre, and it's really easy to just go straight down inside. The Carousel du Louvre is effectively an underground mall underneath the Louvre, so you can enter into that first, skip the lines, and then go through security underground, which is really nice. Of course, if you have a ticket already, which you should, you can usually go into the fast lane, the line for people that already have tickets, which is usually very, very short, if not non-existent. But it can be really nice to go in through the metro or out on one of these stairwells into the Carousel and then into the Louvre from there which is what I think we're gonna be doing today. Basically, the idea was that Eddie was gonna do the real research and I was just gonna film things. I'm gonna double check that I'm meeting him at the right spot. He said, if only I'd been filming when you did that. Look at that skid mark. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> There's Eddie. Sorry for being late, by the way. Ah, it's all right. We need to get rid of this. As an example of what not to bring into the Louvre. Bottle opener. Eddie has brought his entire uh, tour guide bike kit. Yeah. Just so that he can look like he's trying to steal the Mona Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gonna have to hide this somewhere oh so that God. nobody yeah, steals it. Yeah, just shove it in a bush. You can shove it even in like that gap in that bush right there. No, I'm gonna, like, I saw a place over there. Yeah, all right. It's a little bit more safe. <laughs> Example is not what to bring over here. <laughs> this is a detour, by the way. Uh, not, I'm, I don't think there's any recommendation for hiding toolkits and knives in on the grounds of the Louvre because it's kind of sketchy. What other entrances have I not talked about? So we have this, that pyramid. We've talked about that. And yep. then we have the metro. If you get here by line one or line seven, you can actually just get off at Palais Royal Musée du Louvre and follow these brown signs that say Musée du Louvre. They're gonna take you inside underground. So we're gonna go underground. You just follow those little brown signs and voila, you're in the Louvre. And then there, that one, Sport de Lyon. There's the end of the Louvre and this is the Lion's Gate right here. Technically, that's only for groups. But if you print your own ticket and then you come over here, you can around 90% of the time go through that door. The other 10% they're gonna tell you to like walk the whole way, all the way to the pyramid. But you and I know better, and you know that you can go through here. Oh yeah. That's actually the entrance that I like the least. Which one, this one? Uh, no, the... Porte de Lyon? Porte de Lyon. Oh, because it puts you way the heck out in the middle exactly, of nowhere. Exactly, yeah. it puts you right at the end of everything that we want, like the loop that we want to be doing today. Yeah, basically the main things that you want to see in the Louvre are in the center of the Louvre and really easy to get to pretty quickly, which is... The goal today is to really try and capitalize on what little time we actually have, which is only a few hours. The thing is that if you stacked the buildings, the, all the wings of the Louvre end to end, it would run just about eight miles. So you have a lot of space to walk. So that was our first security check, which is basically just the cursory, I'm looking at your bag, but I'm not actually paying attention check. There is real security though to get in where they'll scan your bags and everything. So we're gonna go there, which is where we're headed next. Now, while Eddie was being responsible and hiding his toolkit and knives out in the grounds, I was completely forgetting that I had an OPNL knife and a bottle opener, which they made me- yeah, and they made, me, <laughs> they made me check it, but it's not hard. They basically, he just took them and put them in a plastic bag and gave me this. And all I have to do is come back to the same security spot and so I can get it back. the story. Don't do like the Spaniard. Just go with your stuff. You should. Security. You should. Yeah, yeah actually, it's, it's pretty easy to do. Because <laughs> at least mine isn't at risk of being discovered and thought to be a bomb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, the cost of the Louvre is 17 euros, right? The cost of the Louvre... We're gonna check that out now, and we're gonna tell you where you can buy the ticket, which is right over there. 
But the first thing you need is one of these. Because we need to be we need a map. organizing our whole visit over here. It's on the other side of these triangular sections. You'll see the ticket windows, and that's where you're going to get your tickets. If you're European and under 26, like I am, then yeah. bring your ID card because you go in for free and you forget about the whole ticket thing and you go straight into the queue. If you're 18 or under from anywhere, then you're also for free. Of course, if you only have cash, then you need to pay at a window with somebody, so. Snake game. Time to pay the window. Snake game. If you want to get an audio guide, they're an additional five euros, just so you know. Things over here, there's Richelieu, there's Sully, right over there, and then there's Denon. Famous one is Denon, but we're gonna go chronologically. We're gonna start with Mesopotamia, like the very, very old stuff. So we wanna start over there. Basically, if you walk in through the carousel of the Louvre, or you come down from the entrance of the pyramids, which is this escalator here, you're gonna step right off the escalator, or turn left from the carousel and go straight to the Richelieu wing. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Wing. Come straight down the hall, and then make your first right, effectively, yeah, by nice Captain stuff. Curly Hair here. By Captain Curly. <laughs> The first one is just walk through you, put your hands in your pocket, and then start paying a ton of attention to absolutely everything that you see. You will die if you do something like this. There are over 35,000 unique pieces of art within the Louvre. They say that if you spend 30 seconds in front of each piece, it would take you six weeks to see everything. We've got three hours. So the important thing is to have a plan. Actually, three hours is a super express visit of the Louvre. Three hours is an express? What do you mean by it's an express Three visit? hours is like a complete one, but ah. still, it feels like an express visit yeah. of the whole thing. It'll never, like three hours, yeah, you'll feel like you've just sprinted through, you'll never see everything. But our goal is just to see the really big stuff, because we know you don't have time either, so that's the plan. So, plan. There you go. Base floor, you want to go through here and start going around the whole Quartier Carré until we work our way into Greece. So we want to go through East Eastern Antiques and then Egyptian Antiques now. Perfect. Let the Richelieu visit begin. Yeah. Uh, every time that there's an entrance, yeah. right, the museum has to go over that entrance. Oh, right, yeah. So when you walk through a door like that, you're forcing people to go up and over or down and under. I think we're a little bit too high. Yeah. This is still cool stuff. The nice thing is if you do get lost in the river, you're never going to be bored. It's never written constitution. Pretty much. When you come over here, you take a look at it. That is 5,000 years old. That is like the beginning of civilization. What's most insane about it is it's just right here. You could literally touch that. Yeah. You might get thrown out. That is called, yeah, do not touch things in the loop. Don't touch There's things here. There's a guy over there right watching here, you. Don't watch. The temple where the code of Hammurabi was found, and then they brought the whole temple. Because that's what we do in France. We just steal everything that we can from the whole It wasn't, it wasn't theft, it was a gift, <laughs> right? It was a gift. <laughs> Lebanese and Phoenician, at least if our French is half mm -hmm. decent. Welcome to Egypt. We were trying to, if you didn't catch this when he said we were doing this chronologically, we're moving chronologically through history. We started with Code of Hammurabi because it's as old as it gets and moving our way up. Look at these. Yep. Coming from there, the museum sends you downstairs and it kind of feels like there's nothing over there and there's nothing to see over there, but we're going to find otherwise right now. And not only is the building amazing, but it's easy to forget that this is just the building. Like, it's not like they did it up for the museum. Like, this is how it looked as a royal palace, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, you don't even notice as you're walking around that you're surrounded by this incredible architecture that was actually built for the kings of France. It's just like, oh, this is just the facade inside a museum. Nope. Mm -hmm. This is Egyptian. You can see with the sheer volume of artifacts in here, how you would get 
exhausted. You gotta just keep moving and finding things that are, really interest you, otherwise you're gonna get stuck. Oh, here it is with all these people. We just got flooded with ah, tourists. Now, here's one of the coolest things too. The normal way that the Louvre would force you to come in, uh, they would try to get you to come in, is buy this stuff. This is the original fortifications of the Louvre, the fortress. So there actually used to be a, like a white castle, a French white castle here in the location of the Palace of the Louvre. And if you go into that courtyard, the central courtyard where we just walked around, this fortress would only take up one quarter of that entire courtyard. It gives you a great idea of how ginormous the Louvre itself is. When you get to the Sphinx, you go to the right of the Sphinx, up the stairs, and that's how you get to Greece. We were talking about doing this tour with some other friends and other tour guides, and the general consensus is winged victory is way cooler than this. Anyways, that's Venus de Milo, moving on. That statue is only 2,500 years old. It's practically brand new. If you look at the map, all of this and this section was enlarged by Napoleon III. So this is only 19th century that we're talking about. On the artwork and how it's getting more into the classic and the even black hole crowd. We've left the Greco and entered the Roman. Maybe we're in Greco-Roman right now. I don't know. Neither of us really know what we're doing. I mean, let's be honest. It's all about the tone. <laughs> get through the Roman section, then it's time for winged victory. The presentation alone. So here's the thing though, you just come from that, and then you're like, oh, let's go, Mona Lisa. And then everybody... Yeah, do not touch stuff or they will clap at you and they will be mad. Um, clapping is the worst punishment possible. In France it is. <laughs> Some serious spider web action going on here. That is a really ugly baby. There are a couple of paintings in here that I used to love to find. I've been in, it's been so long since I've been in here, but this one I like to call the origins of Christian merchandising. There are a couple of them over here. Like we have the boogie boarding angel. Really good at <laughs> really good at boogie boarding. And then we have zombie church. Like this guy's even got a meat cleaver in his head. Like he almost <laughs> stopped that zombie, but they didn't quite get there. So assuming they don't change anything, when you get to Artemis, you turn right and this is where we find La Jaconde. This is the Mona Lisa, which everyone's facing this way for the, isn't it the Last Supper on this wall? Uh, yep. No, the wedding of Kana. Oh, that's right. An entire wall is covered by a giant painting, and immediately across from it is this little guy. The Mona Lisa, which Eddie's completely already given up on. These are some of my favorite wings though. I love the I love the huge domed ceilings. Oh, yes. When you guys see those really big black domes from outside, you might think that they're closed off somehow, but they're not. They go straight up all the way. I think what's impressive about the difference too, like you're talking about the growth into the Mona Lisa depth and expression, but then you get to stuff like this where there's an intensity of an emotion. Exactly. That's that's captured so brilliantly. We never would have oh hey, it's Leonidas. Right next to Leonidas is the coronation of Napoleon, which is probably one of the most famous paintings in the Louvre. This is a painting that you have to look from far away. Wow. Oh no, that's that's his mother-in-law. Is that his mother or mother-in-law? That right is <laughs> that is actually the mother of the painting, of the painter. No way, really? That is the mother of Jacques Louis David, because the mother of Napoleon yeah. never came to the crowning. She, she hated, hated Josephine. Josephine. So she never came to the crowning of Napoleon. But Napoleon wanted her in the picture. Uh -huh. So then Jacques Louis David, which is the painter of the, of the whole thing, put his mother That's awesome. as the mother of Napoleon. And just down the hall from the coronation of Napoleon, the opposite direction, is Liberty leading the people. And this is why you don't invade Russia in the winter. Yeah, we've actually done pretty well. This has only been an hour and a half, too. Has it? Yeah, we started late too. We started at 9.30, well after 9.30 yeah, and it's only 11. I did not 11. expect it to be so empty. Yeah, um, just so you know, there's usually more people here. 
Oh, uh, maybe. Oh, this is so cool. Look at this courtyard. Here's David and Goliath in his muscle shirt. Oh my god. Right? It's like a see through muscle shirt. Uh, that way. The wings of victory is that way. Everything's behind us right now. We're walking west in the southern wing of the Louvre. He has a painting he wants to find of a guy in a museum, and I have a painting I want to find of, I don't know, it's like a battle at the gates of hell or something. I can't remember what the name of it is. We were just talking about how impossible it is to remember everything that's in here. You find miss everything. something in the room. You are not going to see everything that you had planned to see, and you will end up seeing way more than what you expected. That. That. Oh, there's a guy visiting a museum. It's a painting of like a million different other paintings. Yeah, so this is basically a painting of uh, Satan convincing angels to become demons. I think this is a fascinating painting. You, you, you're gonna see, that's what you do when you're Satan. You guys will definitely see this painting referenced in my work someday. Man, the glare is killing me. And just like that, we've done the lube. And we did it in like less than two hours. Yeah. So we did it, we obviously got lost a lot less than you might, because I had Eddie. And you also probably will run into more people. So if you got three hours, you can make a nice little tour through the Louvre, see those things, see some others. If you got a lot more time, like six hours, the one suggestion to make is definitely, we're tired, like after walking through all that, we're definitely feeling it right now. We're hungry as well. My suggestion would be to plan to leave, go get food, and then come back. The reason you'd want to leave to go get food is because the cafe here, uh, the cafes are not that good, and they're definitely overpriced. Are you sure your stuff's not here? Yeah. We did not hide it well enough. Are you sure? You're just doing this for no, 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 no. dramatic tension. That sucks. Crap, that sucks. Dude, I'm sorry. That sucks a lot. Right, so this is a good example of why not to yeah. hide your stuff in the Louvre, I guess? Yeah. Sorry, Eddie. That was like a lot of money's worth of tools that just went missing. Don't forget to go back to security to pick up your knife, and then you're good to go from there. We're gonna drown uh, Eddie's sorrows in McDonald's here in a second, but we're gonna grit this back first. Uh. <laughs> Just gotta walk back inside, give him the ticket, and voila. They do make a lot of jokes, though. They're like, you're armed and dangerous, aren't you? At least they've got a good sense of humor. If you speak French, the world is a better place when you're in France. So there you have it, not the world's most comprehensive guide to seeing the Louvre in the world. The world's most in the redundant though, for sure. But that was great. Eddie and I just went through for a couple of hours. And we just wanted to show you that you, you, you can get in, you can see a lot in the Louvre really quickly if you don't feel like you have the time or you're not willing to spend too much time in the Louvre. It is, for a lot of people, super overwhelming and a lot of work to get through. So we wanted to make sure that you felt like you could really get into it and enjoy it. You can also go jogging through the Louvre because there is plenty of space for it.